What's up, what's up? That's kind of loud. How's everybody doing tonight? So question is, how many of you guys have seen the, uh, the box jump video? Only a few of you guys? Well, for the record, like, I really almost died doing that box jump, just letting you guys know. You can, if you ever uh, get on my Instagram and check it out, it's somewhere on my feed, irregular underscore strength. But uh, I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Um, tonight I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, some life experiences. Uh, I'm going to hopefully encourage you. Um, this is kind of the first time I've done something like on this level as far as uh, to a college football team or college, was it, who all we got here, volleyball, volleyball, soccer, basketball. So uh, I'm really excited. So you got to bear with me. I've been speaking since like 8 o'clock this morning, on and off. Um, again, my name is Julius Maddox. I'm 31 years old. Uh, I was born in Owensboro, Kentucky. I have a wife and four kids. Um, I work for a Christ Center recovery program called Friends of Centers. So what we do is we help men and women who've been in addiction uh, with drugs and alcohol. Um, we help them get back on their feet. We help introduce them to Jesus. We just help, uh, you know, help them become the people or the person that God intended them to be. And I love my job. I've been working there for about five years. And a, a couple other things that I do is I get to go to different schools and just talk about uh, the consequences of abusing drugs and alcohol. So um, tonight, which brings me here, uh, first of all, and I, I tell everybody this, like, it's an honor to be here. Like, I didn't even graduate college. And I get to come here and to speak with you guys and encourage you guys. But I do have some real life experiences. And I would hope that you take heed to some of the warnings uh, that, that I'll display tonight or I'll talk about tonight. So, um, like I said, I was born in Owensboro, Kentucky. I uh, had an older brother. Uh, early on, um, some things that I seen in my household, my dad was very uh, verbally abusive. And he battled with alcoholism and crack cocaine, crack cocaine addiction. Um, it wasn't nothing to see, like my mom working, walking to work in uh, uh, single, uh, temp single degree temperatures and, and, and um, in the snow, you know, things like this. And it, 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 really, it really bothered me early on, you know, uh, being made fun of because, believe, believe it or not, but at the age of eight, I was 178 pounds. So uh, I got made fun of a lot. Um, I got made fun of because my dad was, was a crackhead. And these are things that bothered me. So early on, I just felt like I was always in a box. And I always had to uh, either put this, hold this persona up that, that I'm the toughest guy to walk the streets. And I went from being picked on to picking on people, you know? And it, I just figured out it made me feel good, whether I talked about people or whether I beat people up. I just, you know, I just, it made me feel better. It made me cover up some of the stuff that I was experiencing uh, at home, you know? And uh, so playing sports kind of filled that void for a little bit uh, until, you know, I, I engaged in other activities. But I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about compromising and, and, and meaning, because I'm going to use that word a lot tonight, meaning putting myself in position to fail. And so like this, this, this cycle of me continuing to put, my put myself in a position to fail over and over again. And through high school, even whenever I went to college, and, and even after that. So uh, I ended up, uh, like I said, being really good at sports. Believe it or not, I even ran track. Uh, I was not always this big. Uh, I was at least, I mean, I've been bigger, but not as big as I am now. I uh, played uh, basketball, football again. I played, uh, ran track. Believe it or not, I ran the 100 yard dash. Um, just, I was just very athletic. In high school, I was 300 pounds, six. 6'3", and I could dunk a basketball. I ran a 4'8", and a 40. Uh, things, I was very athletic. And, you know, in hopes that one day I would at least get to play Division I football and also in hopes to go to the NFL. But because I continued to compromise over and over again, you know, I continued to sell myself short. I didn't achieve my, I, I didn't achieve my dreams because I was so prideful and arrogant. And, and these compromises just started freshman year in high school. Um, because I played sports, you know how it is, you know, people want you to party and the seniors would pick me up and the first time I uh, drank alcohol was freshman year and they picked me up, took me to a party and I didn't want to look like an outcast. I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to blend in with everybody. Like we are created to, and we long for fellowship. 
Like that's part of God's design is fellowship. And, you know, I just wanted to be a part of something. I just wanted to, to, to be in the group and, 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 and click with everybody. So I was willing to do what everybody else was doing, putting myself in these positions to fail over and over again. And then after that, the next year, um, I, was, uh, I started using marijuana. And this is something that I never thought I would do. I never thought I, I had this mental tally board in my head that I would never do this. I would never do A, B, C, D, and, and, and so on. And before I knew it, I had done every single thing on that mental tally board. In, in high school, um, you know, my friends were out uh, robbing people and, 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 and committing armed robberies. So guess what? I'm running right alongside of them. And, and again, don't take anything that I'm telling you like I'm glorifying it because I'm not. I'm just, I'm just trying to describe what type of person I was. And I was never built up to be this tough guy. So a lot of the stuff that I talk about and, 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 and <clears throat> that I describe, like understand this, like I, I wasn't that guy. I was, so in, I was so impacted by my surroundings and the people that surrounded me. And, and um, I was impacted by the, the, I was influenced by the music that I listened to, riding around trapping and, you know, uh, hitting licks and, and, and using drugs, smoking loud. Everybody knows, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, and, and these things influenced me and I started to believe this stuff. I soaked it in. And scripture tells us um, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I wasn't renewing my mind. Yeah, I was renewing my mind, but it was of worldly things. It was of ungodly things. And, and I, go, I just want you guys to understand that, that some of the stuff that you're taking in, like, and you don't realize it, but it's gonna become, you're going to become that eventually. Um, it's going to play a big role in, in some of your decision making. So uh, my junior year, I decided, hey, look, I'm going to go back and I'm going to play football again. Um, Joe Prince was coach at Owensboro High School at that time. And, you know, everything was looking bright. I'm back playing football again. He had division one, a couple of Division I colleges come look at me, for, come talk to me about, you know, the future. And I haven't played football in, in, a, in a season, you know. So, you know, I, I still had hopes and, 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 and dreams to, like, make the right decision. So, like, my desire was there. I had a desire to do what was right. But my willingness to do what it took to be successful wasn't there. My willingness to, to uh, overcome whatever adversity I was facing, it wasn't there. So I continued to, once again, compromise myself. There was a pool party and my, my friends were all there uh, toward the end of the summer. And I was looking for any reason to get to, for the coach to say, look, just go home. But of course, he didn't just tell me to go home. He kicked me off the football team. And once again, there's just this history of me continuing to put myself in these positions over and over again to fail. So I just had this mindset that one, like you'll never be good enough because that's all you do is, is fail. And, and two, you know, like I'm gonna embrace this lifestyle of, of just committing crimes and doing whatever I wanna do because once again, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to, to to be a teacher or become whoever, whatever I wanted to do in life is because, I, again, I always sold myself short. I always looked at myself. I was never confident at what I did. And, you know, the same, the same story, the same spill. So I, kept, I find myself at this point, I'm at Western Kentucky University, and uh, I just remember, like, this is a time where I was like, look, I'm going to try to turn things over and, 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 and turn over a new leaf and live a different life. And I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to class, um, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do the right things. Well, like always, things were going fine, things were going well, and then, you know, I remember waking up one, one day, I was putting my shoes on, getting ready to go to class, and it seemed like my feet had grown overnight. And so I sit, I'm sitting here with these, with these raggedy, dingy clothes, and these shoes that are too small, and like always, I'm like having a pity party because there's nothing I can do about it. I can't call home, I can't call mom and dad to send me some money because dad's out partying and mom's barely making ends meet. So I called my brother up. I said, you know, hey, uh, I need some help, I need some money. And at this point in time, he put me on and, and then I'm, I'm back to selling drugs. Well, I, I've never really been fully in it, um, just dibbled and dabbled, but this time it was, on a, it was on a larger scale. So, 
um, and, and we were laughed about this earlier, some of the other places I spoke, like how stupid this was, that I allowed my brother to, to, to stay in school and go to class while I, you know, sold drugs for him, you know? So I compromised my education for him to get his education. How stupid was that, you know? And at this point, I quit going to class all around because I'm, I'm running to different states and, and different cities picking up drugs and taking drugs to different places and just this whole criminal lifestyle. And at one point, I remember getting a phone call and this guy's like, yo, uh, why would y'all do that? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, why would y'all do that? And I said, what do you, like, explain to me, what are you talking about? He's like, your brother just robbed my, my spot for $100,000 worth of drugs and money. And at this point, this guy didn't, didn't come looking for my brother. He didn't know who my, he really know who my brother was. He came looking for me. And, and, and again, at this point, I thought I was tough, you know, until stuff hit the fan. And just to be honest, all this stuff that I listened to about, you know, uh, glorifying drugs and about riding around, and, and y'all know what I'm talking about, riding around, getting it and all this stuff, and I really thought I was somebody until stuff really got real. And to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm cool to say that because I don't really care, but I was scared to death. I was scared for my life. Um, they sent people up at Western with, with guns and stuff looking for me, and, and at this point, I'm just like, you know, look, look where my life is headed already. And I'd only really been doing this stuff for about three years, you know, on and off. But once I made it through that season, I ended up, again, I flunked out the first semester, second semester, I wasn't going to class, and eventually, pretty much, I'm not gonna say I, like, pretty much I got ran out of, I got ran out of Western, you know, and I wasn't gonna stay up there, you know, and I, at one point I'm running around with drugs and guns in my backpack, and trying to hold up this image of like, I'm tough. But really, like I said, I was scared to death and I didn't want no part of that life. But I had to, I had to hold up this image of myself so that, that people didn't you know, make fun of me or that I wasn't exposed. But anyway, after I got kicked, after pretty much I flunked out of Western, I ended up going back home and I made it through that season. So guess what, I'm tough again. I'm the tough guy again. I'm out riding around, trapping, trying to be this guy that I never wanted to be uh, because for, for so long, I've, I've had an identity crisis because I worried about so much about what everybody else was doing. I didn't know who I was. Um, and, and that's one of the hardest things that, that, that I went through, experienced in life from, from, a, from, a child, from a kid to an adult was I didn't know who I was. I had an identity crisis. I didn't, only thing that defined me was, was um, I guess the people that I had around me or what drugs I had or how much money I had. And since I was home, I just pretty much went all the way in. It's like, you know, so it went from just, you know, selling drugs to selling drugs and abusing drugs. So I went on from that to prescription pills. Um, you know, I really got strung out on ecstasy and other uh, kind of narcotics. And I never imagined my life to be turn, to turn out this way. You know, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to, you know, have a family. I wanted to you know, uh, be a pillar in my community. But because I continued to compromise over and over again and put myself in these situations, you know, I always, you know, I always came to a dead end. And, and again, I'm at this point to where, you know, I'm trying to uh, fill this void that I have deep down inside with, with, uh, with money and, and, and cars and clothes and all these different things that I thought was gonna fill my heart. But it continued to, I just continued to, you know, abuse these things. And I remember one, at one point, like I had a party at my house and it was, it was 100 plus people there and people were just in the front yard, the backyard, in my house. And um, I just had a moment of clarity and I was just thinking, everything that, 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 I, that, I, that I've always wanted that I thought would satisfy me, um, money, like I said, cars, uh, uh, women, I thought it would satisfy me and I just had a moment of clarity and I said, is this, is this what life has, uh, is this all that life has to offer? And then again, I'm, I'm, back to, I'm back to reality and I'm back doing the same old stuff again. And this stuff just like went on uh, for the next four or five years, just in and out of jail, uh, broken relationships, um, just continued to fail, man. And, and, and get, don't get me wrong, like I wanted to do right, but I just didn't have the, the will to, uh, to carry it out, you know? So 2011, I found out that you know, I'm having a kid, this girl that I was messing around with. And I, once again, I tried to get a job. 
do the right thing. I'm going to be a dad this time. So uh, maybe the, 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 the willingness to carry out a job and, and, and hold a job and do the right thing so I can raise my kid, uh, that, that things will be different. And once again, you know, the same old stuff. Once stuff got hard, once stuff got really tough, I quit. So I'm back to selling drugs again. And this, just this cycle, as you hear over and over again, the same old type of stuff. And at this point, it's 2012, um, I got busted for trafficking marijuana through postal services and, and uh, other narcotics. And this time there was no bonding out. Um, when you get, you know, when you're, when you're I've, I was already, I got revoked on my probation from other previous charges that I had and there was no getting out. So I found myself uh, locked up. My kid is, 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 is getting ready to turn one. And I just felt, like I said, I found myself in a position like, what am I gonna do, you know? And used to, usually I'm always getting out. I got a lawyer to get me out or, or, or whatever, but this time I was there to stay. And I remember uh, the, mother of my, uh, the mother of my kid came up there and brought my daughter up there. October 25th, 2012, she brought my daughter up there to see me on her birthday, first birthday. And I just remember the look on my daughter's face whenever she tried to touch me through the glass, like, Dad, why can't I touch you, you know? And I just remember, it just broke me. It broke me to pieces. You know, I was a very prideful guy. I don't, you know, we don't cry. My dad has always taught us to don't cry, don't show emotion in front of people, always be tough, look tough, carry yourself like you're tough. And at this point, you know, I just remember just breaking down crying and I couldn't stop crying and I'm going back and, and I walk into my cell and there's like 40 guys and, uh, and, and it's, it's chaos, dominoes slamming on the table, TV blaring, it's just loud, it's crazy. And I just remember going back to my cell in, in the midst of all this, I dropped to my knees and I said, God, if you're real, if you're real, God, you'll show me you're real. I said, because if, if this is the life you chose to give me, I don't want it, you can have it. I'd rather die than continue living like this. At this point, the pain of staying the same had become the, greater than the pain of changing. Like it was just something that, that I, I knew it was time. I was broken, I was hurt. I had been in and out of jail probably 20 some odd times. Uh, uh, just for random stuff, but still it's just like all the people that I've let down, all the relationships that I've broken and bridges that I've burned, it just, I was just at the point where I was tired and I was done running. I was done glorifying the things of the world and how much money I've had and what kind of car I drove, all this stuff, because it didn't matter at the end of the day, because you know what I traded it in for? I traded it all in for a jumpsuit. And, and another, another thing that hit me was like whenever, so, Whenever, you, whenever you're engaging in those activities and you're stacking up all this money, um, by, the end of the, by the end of it, when you talk about court fees, lawyer fees, uh, having to pay the IRS back for, for, all the, for the drugs that you sell, when you sell drugs, they tax you for the drugs that you sell. So at the end of it, I remember I didn't even have enough money to buy diapers for my kid. You know, and that was another thing. Like, I'm supposed to be providing for my family. Like, even when I was out there, my family never went without. And I just remember pawning my Xbox at the time. It was like an Xbox 360 or something. I had to pawn that in order to get diapers for my kid. And, and I just remember as a kid growing up, like seeing my mom go through these struggles, I was like, I would never be that guy. I would never be that, that guy to allow my kids to grow up like that. I would never be the guy to allow my kids to, to starve at dinner time. Like, I'm not gonna be that guy. But because I compromised and put myself in those positions over and over again, I was that guy. I turned into that guy. And this is something that I, like again, I never, thought, I never thought I'd be in this situation. So how many of you in here think in the next five years that you have a, a chance to be homeless? Nobody, right? I mean, there's days, there's, there's guys that I sit here where I work at, I sit there in my treatment facility and I'm talking to these guys and these guys got degrees and these guys have, have been business owners and these guys, I mean, multi-million dollar business owners and have lost it all because they had a, a crack cocaine addiction or because they had a methamphetamine habit. You know, and this is, this is real life. And this is why I always tell people, watch who you hang out with. Watch who you surround yourself with. Right now, I'm, I guarantee you there's a group of people in here that, that are doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So it's like, what are you choosing to do? Like, do you want a future? Do you want a, a bright future? Or do you want a, a, a future where you're in and out of jail, uh, letting down your family, your kids, uh, end up homeless and things like this. And I never, again, like I said, I never thought I'd be in a situation. I wanted to be successful. 
then again, I had the, I had the, the, the desire to be successful, but I, didn't, I, I wasn't willing to, do, to go the lengths that it took to be successful. So at this point in time, you know, things, I'm in jail and things are starting to change a little bit. I start to feel a little bit different. I no longer cared about, like I said, glorifying those things. And I kind of stayed to myself and I read my Bible and, and just something was different. You know, I, I just got to a point to where I was just completely broken. And, you know, I didn't know what to do next because I had never had a man to like lead me and show me how to be a man, how to love my kids and love my family. You know, I, I, like I, I was talking earlier, I was one of those kids that envied other kids that, that, that their parents would greet them after a basketball game and say, good job, son. You know, I wanted that. I wanted that. But my dad didn't give it to me. So everything that I went through, I blamed it on my dad. Everything that I went through in life, it was always somebody else's fault. But until I owned up to my own responsibilities is when things started to change until I said, hey, look, it, it's my fault. So I'm going to do what it takes to get out of this hole that I put myself in. But the difference was this time I had somebody to stand in the gaps, and it was Jesus. Jesus stood in the gap for me, and, and it, 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 he heard my cry. When I was in this pit, he heard my cry, and he pulled me out of this pit and set my feet up on a rock and, and put a new song in my mouth. And, and this is something, a lifestyle that I've always wanted, but now it's finally time to embrace it. Like things, like I said, I, I end up getting out and going to this treatment facility uh, called Friends of Centers. It was a long-term treatment facility, um, and it's the place I work for now. And this is where I learned how to, you know, be a dad and, and, and learn how to, you know, uh, love people, like, like, and learn how to serve my community and, and, and serve others and, and actually give without expecting to, re, to get something in return, you know? And I, I just found myself in a place, at a place where, you know, life was starting to look different. But things didn't start shifting until I started putting action behind my words. So one thing about me, I always talked a big game, but I never walked it out. So things started to change, man. And so I battled depression. Because once you use drugs, you, you know, you're using drugs, you're way up here. And once um, you quit using drugs, you're way down here. So until uh, your brain chemistry like levels out, it takes one to five years, you know? So I battled depression. And so after work, what I would do is I would go down to the basement and lift weights. And I did it every single day. So I'd go to work, I'd get up, go to work, uh, come home, work out, go to class, get up, do the same thing. I never thought I'd be the type of guy that could get up at six o'clock in the morning and go to work. Like I, I, didn't, I never thought I'd be one of those guys. I remember one time I was looking at my girlfriend, I said, and, and, and I told her, I was like, I'm gonna be doing this till I'm 80. How crazy is that, that I thought I was gonna be out selling drugs until I was 80 years old. But the crazy thing about it is, at my treatment facility where I work at, we got guys in there that, that are 60, 65, 70 years old. That's, that's how crazy it is. These guys are content still in the same cycle where they're doing this stuff over and over again. You know, so uh, I held a job for the first time ever in my life for, at the age of 26. Uh, I was, paint, I was uh, painting for different companies, just going around and painting these uh, big industrial buildings and stuff like that. And, you know, Things, I started to see the grind, and I started to see that once, like, that I can actually, I can actually be successful, and I can actually be somebody. Uh, and, and this is the thing: like, you guys are in college right now, and this is an opera. You have an opportunity that most people, that some people don't have right now. Somebody out there right now is begging to be in the position that you're in right now. There's people in prison that are begging to be in the position you're in right now. There's people in the hospital that are begging to be in the position right now. But let me tell you this, the only way that I'm successful today is because of Jesus, and that's it. Jesus radically changing my heart. And if it wasn't for that, I'd probably be in prison or dead today. So at this point, like I said, I'm working, I'm working out, I'm getting stronger, I'm in the basement, I'm lifting. I started out, believe it or not, I started out lifting like 135, and I would lift that for some reps, and then, you know, for a season, uh, I, I change over, I'm lifting 225 and I'm repping that out and I would do this every single day. I'm not telling you to do that, it's the wrong kind of programming, but. Uh, so then I went up, I'm, I'm at 315 and I'm repping this out. Like I'd go down there and do three sets of 10 of 315 and then that wasn't enough. So, I mean, at this point I'm hungry. 
Like, it's like, I got to drive. I'm like, man, I'm getting strong, man. What's up? Like, who, are, who, are, who is this Julius, you know? So after this, I'm like, all right, let's throw 405 on her. So I went like two weeks, 405, four sets of 10. So like, at this point, I don't know who I am. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, it's, it's blowing my mind. It's blowing me away. And again, my, my work ethic went from, I'm, I can't even say I, I never had a work ethic. I, I guess I did to an extent, but it went from down here to way up here, and it's all because I started applying myself in the right manner, all because, you know, I allowed Jesus to come into my heart and say, and, and, and give me a platform to, to stand on, you know? And, and at this point, I'm getting uh, different opportunities. People want me to come and speak, and I'm talking to churches here and there. And, and things just, my life just started looking totally different. And, and, a, and a lot of it too is just because I was open and I, I was allowing God to change my heart, you know? And at one point I remember um, I was getting ready to get out of treatment and uh, we were down in the gym and was like, look, let's, let's see how, many, how much weight we can get on here. And we ended up uh, adding up, we didn't add the weight up, we just put every single plate on that was in the basement and I repped it out for like five, five times and it was 505 pounds. And the guy was like, one of the guys that I, that I work out with was like, look, man, you, I don't think you understand. People aren't doing stuff like this. And I'm, I'm totally blind to the fact of, of that. So we go to a real gym. And then uh, I'm, I'm starting to work out there. So I do my first competition. Uh, my first competition, I hit like a 600 pound bench. And after that, it's like, man, the sky's the limit. Let's go, let's crank this thing up. So like, I'll tell you what, I did, I did a, a meet. I did a meet at C.T. Fletcher's gym. How many of you guys know C.T. Fletcher? So check this out. I remember there was times I would sit in my office at work and I'd be watching these videos of C.T. Fletcher and all these guys. And I'm like, man, one day I wish I, I, I'd have an opportunity to be on there. And because I started, tr because I trusted the process and I started grinding every single day, every single day when I woke up, the first thing that was on my mind is how can I better myself? How can I further myself? How can I make myself better than I was the day before? And that was the thought process that I had. And, and actually, three, two weeks ago, I just got back from California and I did, uh, I did a meet down at C.T. Fletcher's gym and I, like, I won the meet. And he came up to me and was like, son, I'm at your mercies. Whatever you want, whatever you want to do, I'll do for you. I'll fly you out here, I'll do whatever you want me to do. So it's kind of crazy, the testament that, you know, at one point in time, I seen myself um, like, you know, wanting to be a part of what this guy was doing and the fact that now, like, he's calling on me. He calls my personal phone number. So that's just something that I think was pretty cool. And it's all because of Jesus changing my heart and molding my heart. And, and it didn't just stop there. I want you guys to understand, as being Christians, like, we're called to, to whatever we can do. So, so in our lives, we're called to do whatever we can do for other people and lay down my life for other people, and lay down my life for my brother. And at the end of the day, if, if, if we say we're Christians, and our relationship with sin is still the same, then I would question your relationship with Jesus, because whenever, you whenever your heart is radically changed, like we don't look like the world anymore. We don't, we don't do as what the world does anymore. And, and a lot of this, can, can, it kinda, it's kind of deep, because like when, when you're talking about sin, that's a hot topic. Because we live in a world where, you know, things aren't, aren't, aren't like they used to be and people live kind of free and, and, and it's okay. It's acceptable to, 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 you know, to have sex outside of marriage. It's acceptable to, you know, use a little bit of drugs here and there. And I'm here to tell you today, it's not okay. You guys got to understand this. If you're a Christian, you claim to be a Christian, like your life should be to like radically, totally changed. Now there's a sanctification process, meaning there's steps that it, it's going to take for you to look more like Christ. But I want you guys to understand that if you claim to be a Christian and a believer of Jesus, that your relationship with sin should look totally different. You shouldn't see sin the same way anymore. You should hate sin. You should hate the fact that, that you're desiring to do things of the world and, 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 and to be like those of the world. And, and I don't know, I just, felt, I just felt like I wanted to share that today. And another thing that I want to share is, guys, at this opportunity, like you have this opportunity, like you have a chance to become whatever you want to be. And it's all about how much effort you put into it. You know, and, and day in and day out, there's, there's guys that, I seen the guys today, 
in the gym, they're pushing each other, uh, they're screaming, they're yelling, and that's what I like to hear, you know? And, and you have to have that same zeal in the weight room as, as in whenever you're out walking in the world as a Christian. Like, it takes just as much work. And tonight, if you're battling, if you're struggling, if you're having, if, if, if you don't know, if you're straddling the fence, if, if you want to, uh, if you're really a Christian or not, like, come on down and talk to us. We'll be down here for, for the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, I just, I don't know, I just feel like whatever I can do to help you, I'm, I'm here. I'm at your mercy right now. So if there's anyone in here that wants to come down and talk or, or, or that, that, that is interested in talking about Jesus, that's what we're here for. Me and, me and Bobby will be down here for the next 15 minutes. But um, I'll open up this time for questions. So if any of you have questions, uh, you know, just ask away whatever you want to ask. Right here. What's my max? My max bench? 716.5 pounds. Yeah. So that's like, that's um, not assisted. That's like raw weight. You know, so like I don't use any kind of, and plus I'm a drug-free athlete. I don't use drugs. I don't use any kind of supplements, no steroids, no none of that. Um, and, and, and again, this process, it was just because, you know, like when I say I grind, like I grind, man, day in and day out, not just in the gym, but just in life. Uh, my calling is to, is to do whatever I can do for the world, and, and I'm going to impact the world one way or another. Right here. How much what? About 6,000 calories. So like, and, and this is something else I like to explain because everybody thinks that I just kick back and eat triple cheeseburgers all day and uh, eat whole pizzas. No, I don't do that. Um, but I mean, I, I do like to eat out and stuff, but for the most part, 6,000 calories. And I try to keep it as clean as possible. Right here. Um, squat max. Okay, so the way my program is set, I don't go over uh, 405 because that's a lot of weight on my shoulders and it affects my bench. But um, last year, I was just feeling anxious and I was like, let's see what I can do. I put, uh, I think we, I worked up to like 735 and I stopped it there. And I don't even, my program don't allow me to go like two sets over 405. Right here. Yeah, I'm sure we can work out something, man. We can work out something. Is there a certain book in the Bible that you should go back to when you're struggling? Man, there's so many, not just a certain book, but so many different, uh, different verses. Um, let's see. One of my favorite verses is, he who finds his life will lose it, but he who loses his life for my name's sake, we'll find it. And what that scripture says to me is that I've been out trying to find life in, 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 in many different shapes and forms of worldly things. But it wasn't until I finally gave those things up and started living for Jesus until my life started to be different. My life was radically changed once I said, look, Jesus, do with me whatever you want to do. Wherever you send me, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And this is one of those things. It's like, you know, I don't, I don't, and I'm not saying, bragging about it, but like, I don't get paid to come up here and, or I don't get paid to go to schools and do that. I do that because like, I want to make the world a better place. Like I have little girls that are growing up and if I can, if there's anything that I can do to help somebody not make the same uh, uh, mistakes that I've made and, and to make this place a better place for whenever my kids grow up, like I'm, I'm going to do it. That's what I'm here for. And I've hurt so much in my past. I've been through so much pain and have, have had so much hurt that uh, I don't want anybody to experience what I went through. So if there's anything that I can do to stop you from, from going to jail or, or being homeless or um, ultimately, like some people just die. Like some people don't even come out of it. Like we had a girl uh, about three weeks ago, uh, she died of an overdose, you know, and she, she was a part of our program. She graduated, she got out, relapsed, and she died. She didn't, she didn't make it out, you know, and, the, and she left behind three kids. What do you tell three kids about their, you know, what do you tell these three kids? You know, it's just sad, but this is the reality of it. And uh, it's, it's just an epidemic, you know? Any more questions? Right here. I mentioned what? I'm sorry. Mind renewal. What's your advice to us as a younger people or a younger demographic? What's your advice when it comes to renewing your mind on a daily basis? 
Yeah, so, man, I wish I had so much time to go, on, to go into depth about this, but this is the thing. So, how can you renew your mind if you're still doing the same old things you was doing you know, before, or you're still listening to the same music that's glorifying those things, that's glorifying uh, committing adultery, glorifying robbery. Like, how can you want be a person who said that you've accepted Christ in your life and you're trying to be a different person, but you're still living the same way, you know? You're still out, whether, whether you're dibbling and dabbling or whether you're, um, uh, and I'm not, I'm not telling you, I can't sit here and tell you that, 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 that drinking is bad, but for me as a Christian, like, I can't be out drinking and, and be a witness to somebody. I just can't do that. I can't sit here and tell this person, no, you can't drink, but I'm drinking myself. You know what I mean? And I know that's like, that's radical change. And this is tough. This is, this is probably one of the hardest things to do is be a Christian uh, in, in this world right now, just the way things are, you know, and especially being in college, you know, because you're worried about what everybody thinks about you. You want to make sure you have a bestie and you're fitting in with this group and you don't, want, you don't want this person to be talking about you, but at the end of the day, like a lot of, some of these people that you're compromising for, that you're partying with, that you think that this is, this is going to, you know, benefit you in some way, shape, or form, like in the next five, ten years, they're not even going to matter. So it's better to just pave your own way, and the best thing for you, man, I'm telling you, is the music we're listening to, you know, uh, and y'all know what, what I'm talking about. You know, I've been there, and I still hear these, and, and this crazy thing is, it's like we have adult, oh, I got, Okay, I, so I'll be on Facebook, and I see people in our community, and, you know, the, so I know everybody gets tagged in all these rappers that be on, that be in, uh, like, on, on Facebook and stuff, right? You know, everybody knows their local rapper that tags you in, tags on your Facebook wall, right? These are the same people that are trying to, that are be out, I see them trying to preach a positive message, but they're the same people rapping about shooting guns and, and holding Dracos. And, 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 and got all the loud, you know what I mean? So like, this is stuff that, that we continue to see. And the problem with our generation and why we're having so much violence in our communities is because us as men, we're not stepping up to the plate and, 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 and standing in the gaps for our kids, man. You have men that are, and, and I'm not just saying men, but that's a big problem is that we're having uh, babies by different women and, and all this stuff and we're not being in the household. Like you gotta understand, a part of God's uh, plan is, is, to, is to be with the woman and have kids and raise your kids as a family, you know? But nowadays we have multiple, multiple baby moms um, and it just, it just throws the whole uh, plan in, in, in disarray, you know? So it's just crazy. Right here. Oh, uh, I did 18 months in rehab. So like long-term, long, long-term. So that's a long time to be in a rehab is 18 months, but I needed it. If I've been using drugs for 10 years, you know, what makes you think that, that 30 days is gonna fix the problem or the 60 days is gonna fix the problem? Um, and I just didn't wanna be one of those guys to be right back in it, you know? Like I really wanted true life change. Right here. Man, my dad, I remember, like I remember as a kid, like my, my dad just coming home, like I can, I can still smell what it, what it smelled like of like cologne and alcohol. You know, when my dad would come home from being up all night but as a, as a kid, kid, all the way up until my dad died in 2016. He died of cirrhosis of the liver. But, uh, and that's another thing, testament, that I knew my heart was different is because I forgave my dad. You know, I finally was able to just, because I hated him. I hated him for everything, you know. And, um, you know, like, it's crazy because four weeks leading up to my dad dying, like, I slept on the floor right beside his bed every single night, because he had to have somebody there with him. And I slept on the floor right there beside him every single day. And actually, like my dad, when, the, when he died, he passed in my arms. Like I was holding my dad in my arms. But I was able to forgive him for everything, and it's all because Jesus changed my heart. If Jesus didn't, wouldn't have changed my heart, like I would still, I'm telling you, I would still be the same person out there ripping and running the streets, being a hoodlum, and, and doing whatever I want to do on my own accord. Like I would have been out there, I, I would still be out there doing it, I promise you that. Because whenever I take over and I allow myself to do what I want to do, man, it's nothing but chaos, man, day in and day out. You know, it's nothing but chaos. Only 1% of people succeed. 1%. 1%. You know, so you got, and, and, and that's the thing about it, we was talking earlier about the world evolving and, and, and things are always growing. And at, right now as athletes and as students, you have to make yourself an asset. 
you have to be valuable to somebody. You know, and I know I'm going back and forth, but at the end of the day, it's about, you know, becoming more like Christ, but, but embracing the, the best you. And it's possible, but it's, it's, it's what are you willing to do, how far are you willing to go to reach your full potential? Any other questions? Right here in the back. Have I ever went back and visited? Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm all over. I go to the jail every now and then uh, in my town. Uh, you know, it's, whatever prison I can get into, whatever jail I can get into, I go. It's like I, I, I know what these guys are experiencing, and I just want to be a, a piece of hope so they can cling on to it. Maybe somebody might, you know, hold on to that and cling on to that and, and actually change. And, and when, that, when, that, when he gets out, he might be able to change his kid and change his, his family, his brothers, his sisters, his, his wife. So you just never know. If the guy wouldn't have took a chance on me, you know, like day in and day out, that's what I do at my, at my job, like I said. And, and, and guys all the time, I'm talking hundreds of guys that graduate, you know, I know that I'm not, I'm not the one doing it. I'm just planting the seeds. But the impact that I'm making on my community and out in the world, sharing the gospel, if that guy would have told me no, where would I be today? If he would have been like, no, nah, you ain't coming to my treatment facility go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's part of God's plan, but what if, you know? So, yeah, wherever I can get in to go and encourage somebody and lift them up and, and help them to, to reach their full potential, whatever I can do, I'm there. So I get to, I have an opportunity, like, I get to go to middle, go to local middle school, uh, local middle schools, but one in particular, they allow me to come weekly and I mentor their troubled teens, you know? And I, I'm just kind of, whatever I can do to help these kids, uh, uh, succeed, I'm going to do it, you know, so that's, that's just where my heart's at, and used to, I wouldn't have cared, I was the one that was polluting my community, I was the one that was selling drugs to high school kids or whoever, whoever wanted to, whoever wanted to buy it, I'm selling it to you, you know, so that's, that's just how life was. Any more questions? Go ahead. Man, that's, that's another thing, like, I desire to hang out with, with the fellows, man, like, I desire, like, there was a point in time where I had uh, went through, my, I had my first year of recovery, and I'm in here, I'm in this place, and they were like, uh, some of my partners hit me up and was like, hey man, we're going to Buffalo Wild Wings to go watch this game, um, UK and Florida Gators game. And I was like, man, I miss these dudes. Some of these dudes I grew up with, I mean, like I've known them since elementary school, you know, like uh, we, we've been in the trenches together, you know, we've, we've committed crimes together, and I'm just like, man, this is a good time for me to be able to witness to these guys and encourage these guys. And what I told him, I said, look, man, I'm not supposed to be around drugs or alcohol uh, because anytime you're on probation or parole, like if, you, if, you, um, if you're in an establishment that's main thing is to sell alcohol, like you get revoked, you know? So I told him, I was like, look, man, I'll come, but nobody, I don't want anybody having, having any kind of like alcoholic beverages at the table. And at the beginning, we're all laughing, having a good time, just watching the game, kick back, just reminiscing on things. And uh, at one point, somebody was like, man, somebody ordered a beer, and I didn't even say nothing about it. And before long, like everybody at the table had beers, you know, and people were getting drunk. Then now they got their liquid courage in them, and they're really telling me how they feel about me, about how, you know, um, I feel like that, that, that I'm a, a Bible thumper, that. I'm a holy roller and I'm too good for everybody now because I don't really talk to them. And it just, I guess the Holy Spirit just hit me and it was just like, you're compromising. You're compromising. And instantly, it was like instantly, I was like, let me out. I'm like, what, what, what's wrong? And I'm like, look, my family, my recovery and my walk with God is way more important than what we got going on here. And really, like I threw the deuces and was like, I'm out of here. And I ain't talked to him since. Like, I mean, I've talked to him in passing, but I cut him off. I can't, I can't put myself in any position to fail again. I've compromised too much. Over and over again, I've compromised. And I can't, get, and, and, and now I'm just to a point to where I, I will not put myself in those positions to fail again. So I don't hang out with my old homies no more. I, I just don't do it. One of my partners just got, he just, he, he's facing 20 years for kidnapping, uh, robbery, um, just crazy stuff. Like, I don't want no parts of that. If you, ain't, if you ain't in my life to encourage me and lift me up and help me be greater, I, I don't need you. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, if, if, they need a, if they need an ear and if they need some encouragement, yes, I'll be there. But for the most part, uh, I, I'm not going over so-and-so's house. 
I'm not doing all of that. I'll, be in a, I'll meet them in a controlled environment of my choice, and we're not going to be around drugs or alcohol. You know, and, and now it's me making that choice. Like, my kids and, and, and my family are way more important now. Um, it means a lot. You know, like, one thing that hit me, I remember I was on my way to work one morning. I was with this guy working, working my steps, and he asked me a question. He's like, did you love your kids whenever you was out there using drugs? And I was like, yeah, I love my kids. He was like, no, really. Did you love your kids? And I was like, yes, man, I love my kids. And he continued to ask me this like three or four more times to the point to where I'm getting frustrated. I'm like, why are you asking me this? I told you, yes, I love my kids. And he was like, well, if you loved your kids so much, why don't you just quit using drugs and, and quit selling drugs and go out and go get a job and take care of your family? And it just hit me that at one point, like really, that I love drugs and alcohol more than I love my own flesh and blood. And it made me sick to my scum. It made me sick to my stomach. I was in disgust at how I felt about that. And I chose, like, from, seriously, from that day forward, I, I was like, man, I will never put myself in a position to fail again because my kids are way more important. Do you know that kids growing up in single-parent homes, like, when, when it comes to being raped, uh, going to prison, um, drug use, uh, going to drug treatment facilities, all this stuff is like 65% and above. Like I think going to, the, going to prison is like 76% of a chance that they're going to go to prison uh, being raised in a single parent home. Because God's design is for us to be raised as a family. You know, now given you're going to have some people to just rebel, but for the most part, God's design is for a family uh, to be raised together as a family. So you got the dad, the mom, and the kids. Like, and, 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 and the... The whole point is for the dad to be the spiritual leader of the household, to raise the kids up, to teach the kid how to, to, teach the kid how to be a man. You know, and that's something that I didn't have. I just thought a man did was lay around, um, treat his girlfriend any way he wanted to treat him, use drugs, use everybody to, that's around, you know? But I, I was wrong. I missed the mark. Any more questions? Right here in the back. So like, I mean, really in jail, you know, it was crazy. I didn't know the Bible, but I knew that God was real. Like you couldn't tell me. You couldn't tell me that, that God wasn't real because I felt it. It was something different in here. And I just remember there was one time I got into an argument with God. He was like, all right, well, prove it to me right now. God's here. That, that God is real and he's here right now. And I'm like, I'm so mad I want to fight this dude. You know what I mean? Because I, I, just, I just don't know the scriptures or I, didn't, I couldn't explain it to him or articulate my words to, to help him understand like that God is real. But understand this too. As, as a Christian, when you're talking to people about is God, being, is God real or how does God allow these things to happen, you got to understand a lot of these people, they don't even want the answer. They just want to argue with you. You know, they just want to argue with you and get you to get out of character and, 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 and show out. Show them, you know, so... At the end of the day, um, it was in jail, and the best thing that I, that I did was just walk it out. So, you know what, it's crazy you say that because like four, four or five years later, that same guy tried to get into my treatment, Christ-centered treatment facility. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Any more questions? Like, I'm, I'm an open book, you can ask me anything. Whatever you wanna ask. Pick and probe, what's up? No more questions? Right here. I'm sorry. Man, the crazy thing about it is, like, I got cold chills when you said that. The crazy thing about it is whatever I want to do, like, uh, for the next, I want to go into motivational speaking, I want to go uh, do strongman, like, people are like, why do you always stay busy? Why do you always say yes? And why are you always here? Because, man, listen, I got a second chance at life, and I, I ain't throwing it down the drain this time because most people, most people don't get a second chance. And now I have a platform to speak, and, and I, I'm able to go and do different things. So, like, it's like I'm making the best out of my life, man. Um, God has given me this life to go out and, and do this stuff, and I'm, I'm going to take full advantage of it. So uh, the next five-year five year plan is, is, is uh, to travel the world, share the gospel, um, I want to do strongman, like, you know, like on old ESPN where them guys are picking up them stones and stuff like that. And, and ultimately, uh, I want to destroy this world record 
uh, in the bench press because I've never, I've never really set goals for myself, man. And now I'm finally achieving my goals. And, and, and you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. Right here. How different did I see myself when I came sober? Like, man, I couldn't, I still can't believe it. Like, really, you know what I mean? I, I just remember laying in the cell and just wonder what life would be like if I, if I actually, because I, I believed it to an extent, but, you know, I just remember laying in a cell and I'm just like, man, I, I wonder what life would be like apart from this if I actually did, did uh, right, you know what I mean? And now I'm like, I'm a pillar of my community. Like, I kid you not, I have judges, I have district court judges call me and ask me for advice. Like, these are people in high places that call me and ask me for my input, you know? And I, I'm, I'm just, I've only been sober for six years, you know? Um, it's like, and, and I've caught myself thinking like, why me? And, and somebody hit me with this, it was like, why not you? You know, you have a voice. You know, people are gonna listen to you, you know? And, and, and yeah, so that I see, now I see myself just, like I said, um, doing whatever I wanna do. As long as God gets the glory, like I'm, it, it's all his, you know? So the sky's the limit, you know? Any more? No more questions. So we'll be up here for the next 15 minutes. If anybody wants to come up here and talk, if you just got something on your heart that you want to share with us and we can pray for you. Um, if you don't know Jesus and you want to get to know him or know how you can get to know him, come up here and, 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 and talk to us. I'll pray us out if y'all don't mind. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time, Lord. I pray for these athletes, Father God. I pray that you give them the strength to succeed, Father God. I pray that if anybody is straddling the fence, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you help them make that decision, Father God, that you lead them, Father God, uh, uh, and save them from, from, from destruction, Lord. I thank you for this, for this campus. I pray for this campus. I pray for many blessings for this campus. I just thank you for FCA here, Father God, and what they're doing. Lord, I just pray that, that once these athletes um, graduate, that they go and they impact their community, they Im impact the workforce, Lord, that, that they're sharing the gospel in places that, that need to be reached, Father God. I just thank you, Lord, and I pray that if anybody in here is struggling with addiction or, or, or struggling with, with um, selling drugs or, 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 or whatever it may be, I pray that you rescue them, Father God. I pray that you help them to see their faults, Lord. Um, I pray that you use these guys or, and these girls to, uh, again, impact our communities, Father God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.